Well, I was actually in Ukraine a couple of weeks ago, and I had a meeting with President Poroshenko, and I, I, he was talking more at at the group I was with than us, you know, giving him advice. But I would say that it's it's really important that Ukraine um, reform, that it really crack down on the corruption that has plagued this country for so long, because the narrative that the Russians are trying to now put forth. The first narrative that Russia tried to put forth in the wake of the Maidan was the Ukrainians are fascists, they're Nazis, um, you can't support them because they are a bunch of right-wing extremists, they want to commit genocide against Russians. That narrative didn't really work. The new narrative, which has the potential to work because there's actually a lot more truth to it, is that Ukraine is this sort of hopelessly corrupt, broken state, it's, a, it's just a waste of money, it's, you, know, you pour money down a hole, it's going to get stolen. It's not worth the West's effort. Give up on it. Let us take Ukraine. And to fight that narrative, I think Ukraine really does need to reform. I don't think we should stick to their level. I don't think that we should, you know, fight fire with fire by also disseminating lies and propaganda. But I do think, um, you know, maybe we should be releasing more information about Russian corruption and where does Vladimir Putin get all his money and where does he hide it and which banks in Switzerland? I mean, they're all, I think we have lots of information we could also put out there publicly. Um, but I do think we have to stick to the truth because I think what the Russians want to do is they want to kind of create this postmodern, you know, media world where there is no such thing as truth. And if we allow them to succeed in that, then I don't, I don't think that we can win.